Okay, so to make this work, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create a base mesh onto which the analysis will be performed. For that, I'm going to use a mesh plane component. So you can type in mesh plane, it's here. Mesh plane is a very simple component. It will basically create a mesh at a specified resolution based on a, a rectangle, the input. So here is the input for the rectangle. So we're going to control the size of this through another piece of geometry, a rectangle and grasshopper. So we'll just type in rectangle. And here I want a rectangle specified by two points. Um, you can use any of these rectangle. You can even draw your own rectangle and grasshopper and bring it in. But this one has the least inputs, so it's the kind of cleanest one for me to work with. So I'm going to plug that rectangle into the B input. And you can see that now um, the mesh has scaled to the size of the rectangle. And I'm going to specify the size of it just with two points. You can keep base plane the same. It defaults to the X, Y. And then for A and B, I just want a point at the extreme uh, lower left and the extreme upper right corner. Uh, to create the points, I'll just use a construct point node. And I'll just duplicate it. This will create two points at 0, 0, 0 by default. And they're driven by these Cartesian inputs. And then I'll just create a slider. Um, actually, I'll just do this through a panel. Um, I'm not going to fuss around with this too much. Um, I really just want to do this as simple as possible. So I'll create one input that's negative 50. And I'll drive the x and y coordinates of my lower left point. And then I'll create another num uh, panel, which has 50. And I'll dr use that to drive the x and y inputs of my upper right point. So here are my extreme points. I'll feed those into the first and second point of this rectangle from two points. Here's my rectangle, and the mesh has followed it. OK, so that was just like a really clean, simple way to create a base mesh. Uh, onto which we will project our shadows. And then the last thing we have to do is specify the resolution of the mesh. I'm going to start at 20 uh, faces for the width and the height of the mesh. And this resolution is important because later on we can adjust it to increase the resolution of our analysis. And basically the higher you go in resolution, the better your image will look, but the more time it will take to compute. Right now you can see that you can't really see the subdivisions of the mesh. It just visualizes as this like full red plane. If we want to visualize the mesh edges, we can go into display. And in the grasshopper display settings, um, there's preview mesh edges. This will show us the actual geometry of the mesh. You see as we increase the resolution, the actual number of faces in the mesh is changing. Um, I think that's useful sometimes. I tend to keep it off because sometimes when you're working with meshes, you don't really want to visualize those edges. It gets very um, busy. Um, so a faster way to visualize, or a cleaner way to visualize the edges is to use the um, extract uh, mesh edges component. This is a, a separate component. You can plug any mesh into it, and it'll just duplicate the edges as lines within your model. This is useful for analysis. Sometimes you want to work with the lines of a mesh, but it's also pretty useful for visualization because you don't have to do this for all the meshes. You just do it for the ones that you're interested in. OK, uh, we'll come back to that later. For this, for now, we don't really need to visualize those edges. So I'll just delete that component. OK, so that's our basic uh, shadow study setup. We have the plane. And now we're going to use a component in Grasshopper called Exposure. Uh, here it is. You can just type in exposure. This component lives under the mesh tab um, under utilities. And Grasshopper has these two like pretty useful and sort of like wild cards at the end here, but they actually come in useful for um, a lot of environmental analysis. Exposure and occlusion. So exposure basically calculates, given a vector and a projection plane mesh and a number of Kind of occlusion objects, it'll calculate which parts of the plane get occluded from those objects. So this can be used for a number of analysis things, but 
It's kind of the, like the fundamental definition of a shadow, so it comes in really handy for shadow analysis. It's not really made like solely for shading, but um, that's a major use of it. Okay, so to um, to set this up, uh, we plug in our plane mesh geometry into the S input. This is our shape for uh, for occlusion. Uh, and then there's uh, an input for obstruction. So obstructions is anything that we want to get the shadows of, right? So the S is our base plane, and into the O, we're gonna plug in um, our building geometry. And this geometry has to come in as meshes. You can't use surfaces, because it's just a purely mesh type of analysis as well. Okay, so um, we can plug in our geometry. Basically at the end of this definition, we have this mesh output, which has the joined mesh of all of our facade elements. And we can plug that mesh into, uh, into our analysis. Um, but to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm going to do um, something a little bit different. With all these inputs, I want to plug in things from uh, my model. So I'm just going to first um, extract these parameters, and I'll show you why I do that. Um, it helps to, as you're working on more complex definitions, it helps to keep your model clean. So if you right click on any of these uh, inputs, you can go to extract parameter. This will basically extract a placeholder uh, node with the correct geometry type outside of, of your of the main node. So I can extract all these parameters. And this is the same thing as basically making one of these and connecting it, but it automates that process and it makes sure that you use the right one. So you see here it's created a, a vector a node, it's created a mesh node, and here if I extract this, it's going to create a number node. So these are the three inputs um, I need for uh, the analysis. I basically need some geometry that will um, cast the shadows, I need to input some rays which will define the direction of the sun and then I need to input the energy of the sun at each of those rays. Okay, so now that I have these ex uh, external, I can drag them around so it makes it easier for me to start connecting things together. So I can drag it over to the mesh, plug in the mesh here and then for the rays, I'm going to use the vector output from my uh, sun rays setup. And then for energy, there's this W um, radiation node, which actually outputs the energy of the sun at each of those vectors. So we're going to plug that into the E. So now that I have those plugged in, I can drag them back over. So you see how it's kind of made it easier for me to connect, so I don't have to drag lines all the way across the canvas. Um, also, um, by externalizing these inputs, I can control how the dis lines display. If I don't want these long lines dragging through my canvas, I can right click on this input and in wire display there's a few different options. You can go to faint display which when you zoom out becomes less uh, obtrusive and you can even do a hidden which hides the line completely. It has this kind of radio um, icon so when you click on it it actually displays the line. This is the way that you can start uh, linking together these different analyses without completely cluttering up your interface with a bunch of these lines. Um, the trade-off of course is that you have to keep track of what's connected to what.